Hi guys, assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to learn about how to determine the appropriate sample size. Now, why is this important? Now, before we conduct any study or survey, it is important for us to know how many of the population that we want to select to be in our sample. This is because if our sample size is too big, it might be expensive or too time consuming to collect them. However, if our sample size is too small, we fear that they might not be a good representation of the population and our conclusion from the study might be unreliable. Therefore, it is very important for us to determine or to get this sample size which is deemed appropriate. Now, how appropriate is appropriate? Well, it depends on several factors. These are the three factors that we must consider before we want to calculate or determine our sample size. So now let's take a look at the factors one by one. The first factor to determine the size of a sample or a proportion is the level of confidence. Now we know that the level of confidence or confidence level is usually expressed by Z. The higher the level of confidence that we want to achieve, the larger must be our sample size. Vice versa, which means if we want to make our sample size smaller for whatever reason, therefore we must also reduce our level of confidence. The next factor to determine the appropriate sample size for a sample or a proportion is the margin of error. Now you may have remembered when we want to calculate the confidence interval for mu or pi, so the formula is point estimate, okay, point estimate plus minus margin of error. Okay, so what is this margin of error? It's basically the amount of error that we, the researchers, are willing to tolerate. Okay, because we know that in practice, it is very unlikely for something to be absolutely perfect or absolutely um, void of error. Okay, we must make some sort of allowance to acknowledge that regardless how careful we are, there will be, I mean, there's bound to be a little bit of error happening. Okay, so that is why we need to make this allowance. Okay, it's called the margin of error. So as you can see, the margin of error or the E, okay, sometimes they write it as an E or ME, okay, it's added and subtracted. So this is what it means. The margin of error is added and subtracted from our sample size. Uh, sample mean, sorry, or our sample proportion. Remember, our point estimate here is either, it could be x bar if you want to find the confidence interval for mu, or it could be p if you want to find the confidence interval for pi. If you want our error to be small, then we require a large sample size, okay? So if you want to make our sample size smaller, for whatever reason, we need to be able to tolerate a much larger error. Now, the third factor to determine the appropriate sample size is the population standard deviation. That is, the width or the variation in the population being studied. Now, we know that sometimes we do not know what the population standard deviation is. Therefore, there are several ways for us to estimate or to guess on how to find the sigma. First is to use an estimate of the sigma from past studies. Okay, in our case, we can always use the sample standard deviation, or S. The second method is to use a range-based approach, which means we take the range from our sample, range is the largest value minus the smallest value, and then we divide it with 6. Okay, recall the empirical rule. Remember that we're actually dividing our horizontal axis into 6 separate, 6 equal parts, plus minus 1, um, from the standard deviation, plus minus 2 standard deviation, and plus minus 3 standard deviation. So 3 on the right, 3 on the left, so we get 6. That is why we divide by 6. Okay? Uh, or the third way to uh, find or to estimate the population standard deviation is using a best guess or our judgment. And finally, the most popular method is to do a pilot study. Pilot study is basically conducting our study on a much smaller scale first, okay, uh, before running or rolling out the study to its full uh, nationwide level. Now, having learned the three factors to determine the appropriate sample size, we can actually see the interaction among them uh, by way of the error formula. Okay, so the error formula is E equals to, remember, E or margin of error consists of two parts, the confidence level, which is set, as well as the standard error, which is sigma over the square root of n. So can we see here, this is n, the sample size. This is what we want to find. So how can we, I mean, we can rearrange this formula to make sure that the what we want to find is on the left-hand side. So let's just rearrange it. Okay, here we just take this whole um, element, 
Okay, since it's division or divide here, we bring it to the other side, so it becomes multiplied. So E multiplied with the square root of N. So it's Z times sigma. Okay, we just leave N to the left-hand side because that is the unknown that we want to find. So we have Z times sigma over E. Okay, now we want to get rid of this square root sign. So what we do is we just square both sides. So we'll have N equals to Z times sigma over E square. Okay, so basically, if you want to find what is the appropriate sample size for a population mean, this is the formula. Okay. Likewise, when we want to determine the appropriate sample size for estimating a population proportion, remember, um, to get the uh, E, the margin of error, it's basically the uh, confidence level multiplied with the standard error. So the standard error for a proportion question is P times 1 minus P over N and square root everything, right? So what we need to do is, okay, another way to express this, is basically z times square root of p times 1 minus p over square root of n. Okay, so we want to bring this n to the left-hand side because this is what we want to find, right? The sample size. So e times square root of n equals to z times square root of p times 1 minus p. Okay, now we want to bring the e to this side. Over e. Okay, as always, we want to get rid of this square root sign. So what we do is just to square both sides. So we get N. Okay, so we square both sides. So if we square up here, we'll just be left with P times 1 minus P. Okay, and of course, we can take these two and put it together. Z over E squared. Okay, so that is why the formula to get the appropriate sample size for popular proportion question is this. Okay, so in your lecture notes, I've written down here straight away the relevant formulas to determine sample sizes. Okay, so this is the formula to get the sample size. Okay, let me just make it a bit bigger. Okay, if you want to find the appropriate sample size for estimating published mean, this is the formula. And if, you're, if you want to find the appropriate sample size for a population proportion, this is the formula. Now let's take a look at this example. A processor of carrots cuts the green top off each carrot, washes the carrots and inserts six to a package. 20 packages are inserted in a box for shipment. To test the weight of the boxes, a few were checked. The mean weight was 20.4 pounds. The standard deviation is 0.5 pounds. Now the question is, how many boxes must the processor sample to be 95% confident that the sample mean does not differ from the population mean by more than 0.2 pounds? Okay, so first things first, we need to determine, is this question um, finding sample sizes for estimating the population mean or for estimating the population proportion? So given the information from this question, we know that this is the question of population mean because they gave you the mean mean weight as well as the standard deviation, okay? Because if it was a proportion question, they would not be giving you uh, these two information. So to solve this question, we need to apply the formula, the first formula that we studied just now, which is N equals to Z times sigma over E squared, okay? So again, I repeat, why do we use this formula? Because this question involves finding a sample size for estimating population um, population mean, okay? So now we just uh, insert all the information that we have. So Z here, since they mentioned to you, they want we want to be 95% confident. So we know that 95% confidence level uh, corresponds to Z value of 1.96, okay? So we know 1.96 times sigma. Okay, sigma here is given as... Okay, of course, we don't know what sigma is, okay? We don't know what the population standard deviation is. However, we do know that the standard deviation for the sample is 0 0.5. So we can use that to estimate, okay? So we multiply 0 0.5, okay? Multiply, okay, over. Now, they tell you that we, um, they tell us that we want to be, okay, or we don't want to be different from the population mean by more than 0 0.2 pounds. This basically reflects our margin, okay? How how far off from the actual true value that we, we are willing to tolerate. Okay, so this is basically our error, 0 0.2. So all of this expression, we square it, okay? I give you time to calculate. So we basically arrive at 24.01. Now we have a choice here. We can either round it down to 24, 
or round it up to 25. Now, this is where we apply our intuition. Okay, so remember, the point of getting a sample is we want to make sure that our sample size is a good representation um, to get the most reliable result, right, from our study. So, um, obviously, as much as we can, we would like to make our sample size the biggest, okay? But due to time constraints and maybe financial constraints, that is why we are forced to make a choice and get a smaller sample. So if you have a choice between 24 or 25 boxes, which one is most prudent for us to accept? Yeah, we will want to choose 25 boxes, okay? Because what if the because 24 is 1. 0 0.01 is the 25th. You know, it's like a 1% part of the 25th box. What if the first 24 boxes are okay, but that 0 0.01 part of the 25th box is not okay? So we would want to be sure, right? So to apply logic here, although we have a choice, we can either choose 24 boxes or 25. It is best or more prudent to choose the higher. So in other words, when we have a, a figure here, we round it up. This applies only to calculating or to finding the appropriate sample size. Now let's look at example 9. Past surveys reveal that 30% of tourists going to LA to gamble during the weekend spend more than $1,000. Management wants to update this percentage. A. The new study is to use the 90% confidence level. The estimate is to be within 1% of the population proportion. So what is the necessary sample size? Now, we know that from this example, we know that this is a question of proportion, okay? Because from here, you are not given any information on the sample mean or standard deviation, okay? So basically, here, we do need to apply the formula, which is for the estimating population proportion. So the formula would be n, time, uh, n equals to p times 1 minus p times z over e squared. Okay, so from the information given here, uh, we know that past surveys with 30%. So this is our P. Okay, so this was the uh, sample proportion from the previous uh, study, so which is 0 0.3 times 1 minus 0 0.3. Okay, times, okay, the Z here, they say that we want to be 95% uh, confidence uh, confident. Okay, so 90% confidence level is translated to a z of 1.65 okay 1.65 over now e is given that the estimate is to be uh one percent okay so this is our error so this is how much you are willing to tolerate 0 0.01 and square it so you just multiply all of this okay so we will get 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 times 27225. Okay, which we will get, oops, we'll get 5717.25. Now remember, just like before, okay, we have a choice either to round it up or to round it down. So the same logic applies. We will want to make our sample size options the bigger the, the better. So here in our case, the sample size would be n is uh, 5718. Okay, just round it up. So we've already calculated the sample size based on the first question. We got 5718. However, the management said that the sample size is too large. So they asked us to, is there anything that can be done to reduce the sample size? Now, for us to answer this question, we need to go back to theory and look at all of the factors that determine sample sizes. There are three factors, right? We've just learned it just now. The first one is the confidence level, Z. The second factor is the margin of error. E. The third factor is the population standard deviation. But we know that from this question, since this question is talking about proportions, so the third factor doesn't apply. So we only have two choices okay, to choose from. Either we change our Z or confidence level, or we change our E error. Now from this question, we can see that our confidence level is already low, guys, 90%. We don't normally go any lower than that. Okay, so we can't change our Z. However, we can see here, our error is extremely small. Maybe that is why our calculated sample just now was so big. Okay, so why not? Why don't we try to make our error slightly bigger? Okay, I think we can tolerate slightly more error. So instead of 1%, why do we change our error to be 5%? Okay, so what we need to do here is 
everything else is the same but then we just change instead of using um, 0 0.01 which is 1% why don't we change it to 0 0.05 so everything else is still the same 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 times 1.65 over 0 0.05 squared so I give you time to copy okay so basically we will get 228.69 or to be safe our sample size has now become 229 see this is a very vast change right from the original 5718 now we can just take a sample of 229 um, people at this uh, casino okay so I think we can make the management very happy